Here's how it all starts at the penalty. We've got to get straight into the action because it was Lamte on Gabriel Jesus. The referee pointed to the spot and you agree it's yes. a penalty. Definitely. 100%. 100%. Yeah, as soon as he, drag, he wants to drag it onto his right foot, uh, Lamte just dangles his leg and he, and he kicks him. You'll see there's a slight touch on the ball, um, but he kicks him in his standing foot. You can see and it's enough to knock him over and uh, correct decision in my opinion. Referee John Brooks pointing to the spots uh, in agreement in the studio that it was a penalty. Let's talk about the technique from Saka. He scored five penalties now this season. That's something we should learn in France because every time we go to the penalty, we lose them. <laughs> and it's a, no, it's a big, big talk in France for weeks now because of that. Euro's coming uh, very soon. So yeah. they, we should learn, you know, from uh, players like Saka or um, the players uh, for, from Chelsea as well. Who, um, yeah, Carl Palmer. Palmer. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So. Yeah, it's Let's not easy to to, to Tony. Yeah, it's yeah. not easy to shoot and score a penalty, you know. At this point in the game, Brighton had a little bit of um, pressure. They were putting Arsenal under pressure, yeah. so it was key for them to score at this time. Yeah, it was a different game plan in the second half. They let Brighton come at them, and they just caught them. Not so much here because that's poor play. They give the ball away. Jorginho makes continues with his run. Mm. Odegaard finds him perfectly, and he just looks where looks up, sees where Havertz is, and he gets puts it on the plate for him. And he taps it into the net. Um, it's, no, easy. It's, it's very easy, but it was a giveaway from uh, from Brian's point of view, and the game's finished. And then they gave up. Did they gave up easily. So it's too easy. It's like training se training session for Arsenal. You know, it's like an opposition on Wednesday afternoon. Yeah. Well, that's the goal that made it 2-0. There was still time for more drama because Trossard, I think he overturns the ball himself. Yeah, this is when they funnel back. You know, when the slow build up, they can get back in. Everyone gets behind the ball. They try and nick it, and they've got the pace on the counter. Look at the quality you can bring off the bench. Look, sit down, goalkeeper. Oh, and then just knocks over the top of him. Outstanding. I think he's been a wonderful signing for the money. Mm. He's been brilliant. I mean, he assists, and he scores goals. He's been outstanding. Cuts across the defender there. He knows he eliminates him. Then mm. he just sits the goalkeeper down and wonderful finish calm as you like. Look, sitting in there again, funneling in. That's what you see. And then they, when they counter, uh, Manu, you're not catching him. No, he's too far, you know. You you can see on his number, you know, in his back. So, But I like the way he runs because he cut up, you know, uh, the possibility of the defender to come back. <laughs> Have a great night, guys. I'll, I'll try. Bring us back some sun, will you? <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> well, that's Alan Shearer out at NBC Fan Fest. Daniel Sturridge is the other legend out. Uh, they're enjoying football with the American fans stateside to watch the Premier League today. And what a day it's been in the Premier League. Arsenal winning 3-0 to go to the summit after Manchester City had leveled Liverpool in terms of points and their victory. What did you make of that Arsenal defensive performance, though? Because we saw that I, I briefly spoke to Tim about the celebrations. The way they celebrated that clearance from Gabriel was as intense as they'd celebrated any of the goals. They are the best defence and the best attack so far this season in the Premier League. They have improved so much on so many aspects, you know, but especially defence because, uh, as we all remember, last season at the same point, they were losing points, you know, easily, making uh, defensive mistakes individually, you know, uh, very easily for the opponent. So I think the, um, the improvements in space of one year is so important, so huge. I'm very impressed. I'm so proud of them. Manu, for me, when I watch this team from the outside, they've got so many characteristics of your side. Yes. Because well, of the size of these guys now. You know, they've gone through a period with, with Veng, uh, with, um, yeah, Arsene, when they were little small guys and they were tippy-tappy in the ball mm -hmm. around. Now, they can have a fight, these fellas, can't they? I mean, they are strong. Declan Rice has helped them yes. out. But I remember playing against your side and you celebrated keeping clean sheets. Yes. That's exactly what we saw from them guys mm. today. And there's a big difference because uh, the average, uh, um, uh, the, the edge of the Asia. team, they're, they are still very young, this team. They have a big margin in front of them. So the quality of uh, defensively, I think uh, it's, uh, it's very impressive because, uh, you know, they play as a team, as a unit. As, uh, as uh, Kai Avers said, you know, after the, the game, he said uh, he's, he's very pleased by the way they attack, but the way they defend. Yeah. They defend all the day together. How it is in football, how you win games. You win as a unity, as a yeah. team. You defend together, you, you, you attack together. This is exactly what they're doing. Yeah, yeah we're going to get post-match reactions now from the Amex Stadium because Roberto De Zerbi is standing by. Roberto, we often talk about big moments, big decisions having an effect on games. How big a decision was the moment that the penalty was awarded against you? No, the penalty was clear. And the referee was 
uh, was good, good enough to 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 decide this game. Uh, we played a good uh, first half. Uh, uh, until the second goal, uh, we were inside of the game, and then the game is finished. How many big moments do you think you had within that game? There appeared to be moments when you could have hurt Arsenal. Yes, uh, yes, but in this moment, uh, without a lot of important players, it's tough uh, to, to create uh, too many chances to score. Uh, we. We played a good game, but uh, without a uh, big uh, chance to score. They had a couple of moments, uh, especially at the start of it, sometime in the mm -hmm. second half as well. For Brighton, what will they be saying about this performance? Uh, poor. It was mm -hmm. poor performance for, from them. They normally have a little bit more control. Even if they get beaten in game, they normally have over 50% possession. Not today. They didn't look like they were going to have that much, you know, and Arsenal just... Uh, sorry, second period. I mean, they just let them have the ball and they sneaked it off them and they counter-attacked. They were going wide open. They were just throwing bodies forward. And Arsenal just had it all their own way. I mean, tactically, they got it absolutely spot on. It could be dangerous. We said before the game, they, they you know, have spoiled a lot of people's parties, Brighton. They're capable of doing it, but not today because... They just grabbed that game by the scruff of the neck, the leaders in this Arsenal side. You know, I, I talked about it. We, took, we always mention, oh, well, Arsenal haven't got this number nine. When's he going to let them down? Well, it's not at the moment, is it? It's not at the moment. They look like they're going to score from every angle. And today, it was just pure dominance from that Arsenal side. Mm. Yeah, and especially when you consider that uh, Brighton had lost before this only once at home this season. Yeah, but um, I think they were surprised um, how um, Arsenal started that game. Very high on the pitch with a lot of pressure on the defense. Uh, try to, uh, to win the game as soon as possible. They were under pressure uh, from the first minute. I think they didn't expect that. I think uh, they, uh, they thought that maybe they, they could feel, you know, the pressure from City. But uh, it didn't happen. Well, three points for Arsenal at the Amex. And a big day in the Premier League is over. Thank you so much to all of you for joining us. We love bringing you the live action. Thank you to Tim Sherwood and Mani Petit. See you next time. I wasn't the penalty taker, so don't ask me that. Was... Another couple of interviews. <laughs> is that a big, going to be a big test of, of this Arsenal team? Yes, their Premier League form has is, is been fantastic. They're unbeaten in 11 now. But throw into the mix those Champions League quarterfinals. It's the first time in 14 years they've been at that stage of the competition. Does, does that create an uncertainty around what that intensity will take out of the team? I don't, I don't think so. I think it's a very different game, especially when it's two legs in the Champions League. Um, home being first as well is always important, I feel, to always get off to a good start in the Champions League. They have so much experience in that team now, and as well, they're just they're winning, and that winning mentality is a good habit to be in. And you can see there, okay, he's holding it in a little bit. I want to see a little bit more smiles from him, because when he smiles, he, he just lights up the place, and I feel like that's what they're doing at this moment in time. Arsenal, they're lighting up the place, and as well, they're... The, the whole sort of Emirates at this moment in time is is a different sort yeah, it's of... Buzzing, it's it's it? buzzing, isn't it? It's There's, very different to it has been in previous years. a stronger years. connection between the players and the fans because the, I think the, the fans are proud of what they're seeing out there. But if you're a good player and if you're a good team, you want to be involved in the Champions League quarterfinal. If you weren't, it could almost detract from your league performances. So it's just a snowball effect, you know. They'll go into Tuesday full of confidence. I think they're a better team than Bayern Munich. I think they can get to the semis without question. And, and that's going to help the league form, I think. Obviously, injuries are a big thing, as we saw last season with Saliba and co. But Touchwood, so far, they've avoided that. I think with the Champions League as well, it means that he has to rotate. And when you have to rotate in certain parts, it actually brings the togetherness of the team. And I think sometimes that's really important. And then when you use people that have had minutes in their legs, but from playing Champions League myself, knowing that sometimes you might play in the league, sometimes you might... The team just feels different. There's a togetherness. And again, I know we were so close to it, but it didn't feel it felt so different. Like then there, they were all in it. And I think because they've all played their part to this title race and also maybe on Tuesday as well. Yeah, I mean, he's not a big one for rotating, is he, Mikel? You look at the stats he's used, less players made fewer changes than Klopp and uh, Guardiola. But uh, yeah, as you say, he's been made forced five to. five against Luton, didn't he? No, and that's why it was such a shock, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, it was quite a shock. And it it's obviously business came up. The but there's a very positive sort of outlet, like yeah. you say, on the bench. You know, players don't play for a period of time. You can have players that can sulk around, and but 
Mikel's literally nipped that in the butt and mm. it just doesn't happen. Um, and I think as well, you've got to give credit to the staff because that's the side of it that people wouldn't see how important the staff members are who are behind the scenes, I think. I believe. You asked the question, Karen, how important is it they actually went through that experience of, of last season of getting so close, being in front and then, and then, you know, having a couple of setbacks in terms of improving, in terms of getting closer to getting over the line this time? But I think it's also the manager. I think the, we talk about the players and their maturity, but ultimately the, the manager, he sets out the game plan. And I think against City, even at Luton, they went into back five at times. So sometimes whether that's saving energy or whether that's the defensive mentality that Bakayo was alluding to, that is that saying clean sheets win your championships and goals win your games. But if you stay in games because you're defensively solid, it will always give you a chance, as Bakayo alluded to. But I think the manager, and his maturity one year on in his own development as a manager in a title race. This is again and now adding Champions League. He's knowing when to play certain phases in the game and also the right place for those moments. And tonight I was really, they had everything tonight. I think really it's good. a good point about Mikel because last season and before he was hopping about in that technical area and it almost transmitted itself to the players didn't it and they were getting a little bit tense he was showing the pressure but he's a little bit calm yeah now. but calm, we were saying, yeah. we were saying when, they went two, when they went two nil up there was a bit more urgency of panic a little bit it did seem like it slightly i think it was more on the fact that they want to keep the clean sheet i know you know you obviously played as well two nil is sometimes quite a scary result at times mm. because as soon as the other team gets a goal how in you know, sort of everything's rushed and everything's panicked. Um, but it, it just wouldn't allow it. So I think he always keeps everyone on their toes, Mikel. Mm. He really does. Mm. I thought that even again, like, there was so much positivity in terms of like every time the, the goalkeeping coach every time clapping that everyone was up and I was like it's only one pass but like every <laughs> there was so much put and it's just like they are trying to shift that they don't want any neg negativity they don't want anything to derail this latter part of the season a penalty it was in the first half that was the difference we've heard from Bukayo Saka who converted it but Karen what was it, was it you think the plan to try and isolate one of the Arsenal wingers against one of the the Brighton fullbacks yeah I mean look they're they're unbelievable, the wingers, aren't they, for Arsenal, especially in that 1v1. And they really tried to give Jesus the best opportunity to, to get at this 1v1 situation against Lamptey. And I think he's in control straight away. He's driving into the penalty area. He's got control of it. And it's just a little flick over. And I know Lamptey does get a touch, but he then takes that contact there on his bottom of his left leg, on his right leg, sorry, for Jesus, I think stops him from going collecting the ball, and that's why the penalty is given. So for me, it is a penalty. But could you see the argument the other way, Alan? If you're if you're Brighton saying there is there is contact there, so it shouldn't be yeah, a penalty. Certainly, some Brighton fans behind me could see the argument <laughs> at half time. But um, yeah, I just don't think there was enough. There was too much contact on the leg compared to on the ball, and also uh, it wasn't a clear and obvious error from the ref, was it? And I was thinking when it happened and it went to VAR, I thought, oh, God, we're going to be sat in there for five minutes. But I thought VAR were nice and short and sharp today. They didn't mess about, uh, came to the decisions quickly. And, yeah, I think it is. I think it is a penalty. It, it, just because you get the ball like that doesn't mean it isn't. Um, so I think it was a good decision by the ref. And we heard from Bakao Saka on, on practising this exact method, this exact spot, Theo. I think, uh, yeah, he's... Yeah, like I say, it's second nature to him now, penalties. Um, I mean, he looks like a penalty taker. I know he said he's, he's not, he doesn't feel like he is, but how calm he was there, it was never in doubt. But And as well, the smile when he celebrates is what I want to see more. more you saw more these, where he put the penalties, didn't you, before? So he put some right and left, and most of them were in the corner, weren't they? Did it feel that Arsenal needed a second? Yeah, yeah, I thought so, yeah. Because at 1-0 in the second half, it was a little bit like that, wasn't it? It was delicately balanced, as we say. This isn't, I suppose, too clever from a Brighton perspective, and CISO has, has been circled here. I don't think you were here, Alan, when we were looking at Yeah, this. no, it's ball watching, isn't it? Ball watching, but Jorginho's got plenty of time. So just a, it's a little run by um, Kai Havertz, but a very important one, and one that you learn to do the longer you play in that position. Sometimes this season we've seen him not make runs across the near post, and that's where, more often than not, you get your chances. Nine for the season. Is he answering the questions, Theo? He's answering my question I set him at the start of the season, which was trying to find his position. But I think Mikel has found it. And I think the, the ideal thing about Carl Havertz as well, he's, he's very cool and calm on the ball. I think playing in midfield and 
And at number 10, it's, it's a position where he's always comfortable on the ball, but I think now he's just getting that other side to the game, which I think which we all want to see. Uh, and he's scoring plenty of goals. And when he tends to score, they, they tend to win most of the time. He shines well. a very favourable light on Arteta, really, and his coaching abilities, I think, because we weren't quite sure what he was at Chelsea. That's no disrespect to the coaches there, but Arteta's made up his mind what he is, I think. and uh, Which is what? What he, what he did today. <laughs> Sticking the ball in the net. Uh, well, we've been going on about centre forward, haven't we, for a long time, but uh, maybe people won't mention that quite as much now. And uh, it's a different sort of centre forward, but um, he's, uh, he's answering the call. There are options now in the forward positions as well for Arsenal. He took the two wide players off. He replaced them with Martinelli. It's amazing to have that option from the bench. And also Leandro Trossard didn't get a great reception when he came on oh. from the Brighton fans. I think he might have enjoyed this one, Karen. I'm sure he would have expected it, but he was the one that kind of nicked in and got the pressure. And then he's got the whole of the pitch. And sometimes that can be quite nerve-wracking because you've got so much time. Someone's breathing down your neck. Every touch has got to be perfect. But it was a brilliant finish. And this was in there, pressing in the initial part. And then he's on his way and... It's all about being calm and composed. And he, that touch takes him away across the defender. I've, with the little dummy, I was a bit like, oh, I'm not sure. But then that nice little dink. And this is the length he had to travel, pressing. And this is what I was on about with Arsenal. They can sit deep because they know they've got counter-attacking players like Trossard who can come on and it's a brilliant finish. How important is it, Theo, that there are several players that they can look at who are contributing goals right now? Do you know what? You just took the words out of my mouth. I was going to say that the, the substitutions, like the the goals and how they affect games and change, they fit right in. And it makes Mikel's life so much easier because these players are hungry, they want to play, they want to give Mikel a headache as well because obviously the Champions League coming up as well. But you can start trusting a lot of these players and that's a fantastic thing. And as well, I love the fact he celebrated. I really, I was saying this before when, when players have gone to previous clubs and people say, why are you celebrating your, your, your other team? And I'm like, no, he's enjoying the moment. Probably because he got booed when he came back. Maybe that as well, <laughs> but why not? You've got to enjoy every moment because they'll go so soon rather than later. But it's, I was go just going to say, it's not easy recruiting players like Trossard, players of, of really good ability, but also lads that aren't going to kick up a fuss when they're not playing, because he's not really in the first 11, isn't he? But when he does come in, you don't really see the join. So that's an art in itself, getting lads like that into the team. All right, let's get more reaction from the Arsenal dressing room. Here is uh, Kai Havertz talking to David Craig. Congratulations. Before we get to the Arsenal performance, obviously earlier today Manchester City had played their card. What did the manager say and what was said in that dressing room following that result before you walked out today? Uh, to be honest, uh, we, didn't sp we didn't speak about it. Um, we tried to focus on ourselves, tried to uh, yeah, win the game. I think that's uh, more important than look uh, at the other games right now. Of course, we look at it, but um, I think right now it's not the moment to analyze something. Just win our matches and then see where that brings us. Clearly, you've responded to that result. What message does that performance here tonight send out to your other challengers? Yeah, I think we are, we are ready for the challenge. We are there um, and we are up for it. I think um, you see it uh, Every week that everyone uh, plays at, at the limit, I think we even maybe can play better, but you know the attitude and uh, the work rate of the boys is uh, phenomenal and everyone puts just everything into that game and um, I think that's we are also um, yeah, that's successful right now. There was a time in past seasons, and I know you weren't involved, that a two-goal lead, maybe sometimes a three-goal advantage wasn't enough for Arsenal. How much has the game management improved? I think a lot, um, especially our defending. Um, I think especially the boys at the back, what what they are doing right now is outstanding. Um, and, uh, you know, everyone is involved in that. Um, the players up front as well. We try to get the ball high up the pitch. Um, but, you know, the way they defend the box is, is incredible. And uh, I think credit to the team for their, for their defending. But, um, yeah, we have to keep on going. Next uh, big game is waiting during the week. And, uh, yeah, we are, we are ready for it. Does that stability at the back give confidence throughout the team and particularly to yourself? It's now your best scoring season in the Premier League. Definitely. I think when you um, feel that you're so strong uh, at the back, it, it helps you a lot. Um, yeah, and I'm, I'm enjoying myself right now. I, I um, yeah, try to help the team and uh, yeah, that's, what I'm, that's what I'm doing and I hope to, hope to keep on going that form. How much are you enjoying proving some of your doubters wrong? A lot. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, it's part of the game. There are always people that don't like you or that uh, speak bad about you. I think we have to, or I accepted it, and you cannot make everyone happy. I, I try to make myself happy. The people are important to me, and that's the most important to me.
Well, you're certainly winning fans with your performances. Before we hand over the trophy, I'll just tell you, I don't know if you're a tennis fan, but the great Sir Andy Murray has just tweeted that you're easily one of the best strikers in the Premier League. So you might want to direct message him back or tweet him back later. But Kai, you are the player of the match. Well done. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Thank you. Well done, mate. Thank you. There you go. The blessing of David Craig and the blessing of uh, Andy Murray. Sir Andy Murray, who, who knows exactly uh, what it takes to become a champion. And maybe this will be the year that Kai Havertz becomes a champion of the Premier League as well. Uh, it's not just a, a coaching issue. There's, there's something that's got to be said for the recruitment, the spotting of him working in this, this Arsenal system. Yeah, quite. I mean, so many eyebrows raised when they spent £60 million on him. They well, we don't need that sort of player. We've got a few already. Um, Arteta saw the place that he wanted him to fill. And he's worked on it, obviously. I mean, I, I do... I'm so pleased for him because there were times at the start of the season and that and he was missing chances, one or two boos around the ground and you could just see his shoulders slumping and been in that position, it's not nice, but he kept on going and he's getting his rewards now. Mikel, nice to see you. Mikel Arteta is amongst friends. Come and join us, Mikel. Come and stand next to me over here. Congratulations. Thank Just um, sum up what you what you made of that performance from your team today. Well, really happy. Uh, big performance. Uh, they haven't lost here since August, I think. That's right. And that tells you the story. They are a really, really good team. Extremely well coached. They make life really difficult for you. But I think today we're outstanding and, uh, and we needed that level to, to beat them today. So how did you do it? Well, first, I think uh, we showed a lot of quality in, in certain of the pitch and with the ball. We are really connected. We had real purpose and clarity where to attack, when to attack against a shape that they had uh, slightly different uh, than what we expected. And then without the ball, we were so disciplined. Uh, when we were higher up the pitch, they are the best team in the league by breaking that press. And then you have to track back. And then we stayed really disciplined. And we were really humble to be in certain uh, positions, uh, to be patient there, to regain the ball and hurt them. You mentioned that, that maybe set up in a way that you, you didn't expect. Can you give us a bit of insight into the tactical thinking, uh, the battle that was going on on the touchline? Well, we prepared it because they did something similar to... Um, to that against Liverpool away, uh, which they never do, and uh, they do it in the other side today. So we prepared because we knew that it could happen, but we didn't know the approach. What, what is that? Uh, something. <laughs> I want to explain, but, uh, but they are really difficult. They are really well coached, honestly. Uh, what they do, um, it makes a lot of sense and it complicates his life. Mikel, I asked Bakayo, but I'm uh, going to ask you the same question. What's the difference with your team this year from last season? We are all older, and you can tell, especially <laughs> on me. Uh, we have obviously went through a lot of moments together and uh, the chemistry that, uh, that you build within the, the team I think is very important. We signed some tremendous players as well, which always helps because it's about them. And then I think there is a good moment because the squad is healthy, you know, and the momentum is good, the energy around the place is good and, um, and we've been through it already and I think that helps. We were just, sorry, go on, I was just going to say, as you as a manager, another year mature as well, like what's, what's the difference in you as well? Uh, my energy is the same, the enthusiasm is the same, but probably you take it slightly different. Um, I don't know, I don't know how I felt last year, to be fair, and just enjoying the moment and embracing it, and, and let's see how far we can go. We were just talking about Kai Havertz, Mikel. I mean, you must be delighted how he's grown into the role uh, that you're asking him to play. Uh, he stuck with it and shown a lot of character. Uh, he was tremendous again today, but he's been, his overall performance has been superb. Now his goal contribution is um, higher than anybody else in the league, I think, in the last few months, and that tells the story. But his war rate, he was chasing 70 yeah. metres here. A player that has these hearts and, and this determination, that's why everybody loves him. It's it was a centre forward's goal as well, wasn't it? The little run. Yeah, and being there in the right time, yeah. Jorginho running there, I was a bit yeah, surprised yeah. about that. <laughs> Still had the legs, but, didn't he? Uh, he was but a Mikel, good timing. Um, as for Kyle Havertz as well, did you always see him as being a striker? Because I was always uncertain, I didn't really know where, what sort of play he was, but were you clear when you signed him where you were going to play him? I think you have to feel the player, you know, until he's not in the environment, I think it's very difficult to, to understand. I thought he could play in three different positions, to attack in midfielders and as a nine. And then, yeah, we started to feel, you know, in certain spaces, certain relationships, which is everything, and you know better than that. If you like to run, you need somebody that plays those balls in behind. Uh, and those those relationships are appearing in a natural way and sometimes the player decide at the end, not the manager, where they have to play. 
How much pride are you taking, Mikel, in these defensive performances as well? Another clean sheet today, five consecutive clean sheets on the road, uh, restricting City to so few chances. Luton didn't get a sniff midweek and Brighton very little today as well. Teams are saying they can't create chances against you now. Well, really good because that means that um, our collective organisation is very strong, but as well the, the desire and the, and the love for defending from the player is there and it has to be there. If not, you cannot do that. You saw the reaction of the teammates on, on Gabi 3-0 and he blocks that shot. That's them. That has nothing to do with me. That's the spirit within the team and how much they want to win. And that's uh, really good to see. One more before they drag you away. Um, you've got some big games coming up in the Champions League as well. Yeah. Are you thinking in terms of any priorities? No, priority now is, uh, is Tuesday for sure. We're going to have an unbelievable atmosphere at home. First time in 14 years that we are in this position. Let's go for it. We wish you luck. Thank okay. you, Mikel. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Good luck. Mikel Arteta there. And you see, um, let's go straight to that because it's interesting, not just the, <coughs> the Champions League games, but the games that fall either side of them as well. Bayern Munich at home. Then Aston Villa, who, as we know, are, are fighting for Champions League football themselves and they have to go to Bayern and then go to Molyneux before those next two. This, this is it, isn't it, Theo? This, these next six games could tell us a lot about the destiny for Arsenal. Yeah, <laughs> yeah just breathe, I think. Um, I think as well, the, the great thing, Mikel, he is, like you say, when he speaks, say so calm, you, you list every word, the players will be so much... So the play was you you have to listen because he's got so many experience he's worked with before in the past um and he won't switch off he won't let you switch off at any but do you moment. think he is calmer oh karen yeah, asked the massive. question about you know what what a change for him from last season but do you think he has i i do i mean he says he he says he's not calmer but he definitely seems like yeah, it to I me he really not. does which is you know it's really pleasant to see like i say i keep on nagging on but the back room staff is so important I think to him to actually they've actually witnessed it on the outside to see him visually when he's during a match and I think they've probably helped that process looking as well. at those fixtures I mean Bayern Munich particularly they'd have been looking at this today the coaches and maybe the players and they would have thought oh that they're a good team and we knew that anyway but maybe they would have put them even higher than they thought they were asked them because that was highly impressive I asked the question about priority because I got the feeling that Pep Guardiola sort of nudged it, the question when he was asked it the other day, uh, towards the Premier League rather than the Champions League, which of course they, they won last season. Um, it's the game for, for Liverpool tomorrow at uh, Manchester United, of course, is a huge hurdle. But I just wonder, the, the manner of Arsenal's victory here, away from home, Karen, does that get you... Or will that get people thinking that, that this indeed could be their year? Well, I think you mentioned the performance away from home here today and everyone probably were looking at their fixtures when they're away. Obviously, the Spurs one is in there, uh, Manchester United away, Wolves away. But I just can't see how teams would score against them. A li they're so solid. You've got you to convince Opta of that because they've still only got them at 26%. No, I'm, not, <laughs> uh, no, I'm saying that the games that they've got to play, look, it's f for me, if... If Liverpool win tomorrow, it's still in their, their hands. But you asked about the fixtures that are there in terms of for Arsenal. So I'm looking at them going, we question the away fixtures, or a lot of people do, including myself. But t performances like today, where they keep clean sheets, when they, they nullify opposition to trying to get opp opportunities, I, I just can't see how teams will score against them, to be honest. And, but, you know, um, Gabriel went down, didn't he? And he had a knock and it was fine, thankfully. But injuries can still play a part, can't they, this season? They had Saliba last, and you're just keeping your fingers crossed if you are Teta that none of his key men do get injured in this vital last few games. What are your biggest questions still around Arsenal? They're answering every question I can even think of, to be honest, because, like I say, that experience they've got from last year. I mean, I think what's really important to see as well, they lost a lot of points for the bottom teams, I felt, last year. And the teams they're playing against are actually challenging for something. Wolves are trying to get into Europe as well at some point. Everton are trying to stay up. I think away from home as well is an expectation now of Arsenal where they, like you say, they keep clean sheets and they get that first goal. And when they get that first goal, they're really hard to break down and then it opens up teams, which then allows more space for these players, Odegaard, to get involved. Declan Rice with the manner he is in midfield. We didn't really speak much of him tonight, but that's how consistent he is because we expect this from him now. So they, they, they've got everything right now and it's, it's, it's really nice to see. I still don't know who's going to win it. But, yeah. 
Well, does it does it the manner of Man City's second half performance certainly Alan today super impressive at Crystal Palace Arsenal just winning here in that this fashion does that just then pile on extra pressure for Liverpool it's a huge game in at any time of course going to Old Trafford yeah well you know you bang on there that it is it is a huge game and you're hoping from Arsenal's point of view Manchester United can lift their game compared to how it how it has been all of a team with lots of experience in it and certainly the manager will play a part in that. Um, arguably, that's their, that's maybe their biggest hurdle, isn't it, Liverpool, from here on in? You look at it and on paper, you think, oh, I've har Arsenal got the, the hardest uh, run in. But, uh, yeah, I mean, if Liverpool do win tomorrow, I mean, that, that's a massive statement, I think. That Spurs game as well for Arsenal, isn't there? Mm. Lurking. I oh, know, North London <laughs> Derby's always... Theo, you know Don't better. ask me to score. <laughs> <Don't know. laughs> I'm Derek Ray. I'm joined for commentary by former Arsenal fullback Lee Dixon. And without doubt, a match with the potential to bring genuine excitement. It's Luton Town taking on Chelsea. Hi, Derek. Thank you. Well, both managers will be reminding their players how important... Well, it could be on for him here. Is it going to be? Keeper getting the touch. And it's gone behind for the corner. Over it comes. He did his job defensively. And they'll get ready for the throw-in. Pearson. So after that, a goal kick it'll be. Well, pick your adjective where Hakim Ziyech is concerned. Explosive, I think, might be in a... Pro Can they take the lead here? And mistimed the run, sadly. That's offside. <laughs> Throw-ins given. This looks promising. Well, it's the care and attention, all that works. And a blunder by the keeper. Werner. Promising attack, but his timing was off. Well, they've lost possession of the ball. Nicely cut out. Oh, that's an interesting pass. Ziyech. In it goes. An early goal. No wonder they're celebrating. Well, as we look at this again, the keeper's every right to ask where his back line was. But 2v1 in the end, he's thinking now, is he going to pass or go around me? He's got no chance. Well, real difficulty keeping the ball. Ball's gone. 